Let's look at <clears throat> page 68 in our packet, and we're looking at question 6 here. Again, this should take about 10 minutes here, 9 minutes preferably. Um, again, 4, 5, 6, and 7 should be the short questions, the short answers. Um, answer the following questions about magnesium hydroxide at 25 degrees Celsius, the value of the solubility product, um, KSP for MgOH, 2 is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 11. First question always is, where do I start? Well, look for clues in the question. When it says the KSP value, you should automatically think, oh, okay, that's going to be equilibrium. <clears throat> so look for things like that that will help you out. Um, letter A, calculate the number of grams of MgOH2. Okay, it says number of grams, and we haven't done that. They've done molar solubility, which is basically the molarity. But if you have molarity, can't you get moles from that? And then once you have moles, you can change moles to grams. So calculate the number of grams of MgOH2. Here's the molar mass that's dissolved in 100 mils of saturated solution of MgOH2 at 25 degrees Celsius. If it's talking about solubility, first thing you want to do is make a rice table. So let's make our rice table here. So our reaction, again, it's solubility. So we have MgOH2, and that's our solid. And it's going to dissolve into magnesium plus 2 ion plus 2 of the hydroxide ions. Yeah? So you have this. This is solid, so we can ignore this. So what we have left are these two sections here. Initially, we had zero of both of them. It's not a common ion problem. They're just saying, hey, we're going to stick this magnesium hydroxide in water. This is going to change by some number. We're going to add some amount X to it. On the other side, this is going to increase twice as fast as that one, so we're going to add 2x to it. So at equilibrium, this will be 0 plus x, so it's going to be x. And at equilibrium, this one will be 0 plus 2x, so we'll have 2x here. <clears throat> Second thing you want to do is always, always, always write the equilibrium expression. So we have Ksp is equal to the concentration of the magnesium ion times the concentration of the hydroxide ion, and it's squared because there are two of those in the balanced equation. Plug your numbers in. They gave us KSP is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 11, and then we have x times 2x squared. There's no plus x or minus x, so we don't have to worry about, you know, ignoring something because this little KSP number is so small. We don't have to worry about that. So we can combine these two. And one thing I've kind of listened to you guys, uh, when you have this 2x squared, that 2 goes, that squared goes to both of those. So that's 2 squared and x squared. So this converts to 4x squared times x, right? Or it's just 4x cubed equals 1.8 times 10 to the negative 11. My next step would be to do what? Divide by 4 on each side. What would you guys pop in your calculator for that, would you? What is it? 4.5 times 10 to the negative 12 equals x cubed. And then you take the cubed root of that, right? So if we're taking the cubed root of this, or it's to the 1 third power, right? Then we would also take the cubed root of this side. <clears throat> so it's 4.5 times 10 to the negative 12, and you could say if you want to pop it in your calculator if it makes more sense to the one-third. And did you guys, did you guys get 1.65? So I got 1.65 times 10 to the negative 4 molar, okay? Is that what they're asking us for? No. Here's the molarity. Remember, molarity is moles over liters. We need moles. So if molarity is moles over liters, then what we have here is we have the molarity, 1.65 times 10 to the negative 4. And we have the liters. Didn't they say up here it's in 100 mils? So we have 0.1 liters. We need moles. So solve that for moles. And when you solve that for moles, do you guys get 1.65 times 10 to the negative 5? Yes. 1.65 times 10 to the negative 5 moles. Label stuff. Make sure you label it with the units of measurement. Do they want our answer in moles? No, they want it in grams. Do you know how to change moles to grams? Yes. 
So we've got 1.65 times 10 to the negative fifth moles of whatever that stuff is, magnesium hydroxide. They gave you the molar mass here. So for every one mole, it's 58.32 grams. And you guys should have got 9.6 something. 9.6 times 10 to the negative 4 grams. No, it's considered you got that off a of chart standard. The only thing for sig figs you would count would be the 100 mils. So three sig figs. And notice they put a decimal on that, so it's three sig figs. So on my final answer, if they, I would put one more digit, but for some reason I didn't write down one more digit here. Was it 9.60? 62? 9.62 here. So yeah, that would be the sig figs there. Okay, so what they gave you points for on this... Let's see, you got one point for calculating the solubility. So you got, they didn't give much of a lot of points. They gave you one point for this 1.65 times to the negative 4 molar. That was a point. And then one point for counting the correct mass. So this was only two points. That was kind of mean of them. So two points on that, and that was it. On the next part, the energy required, notice it's absolutely nothing to do with solubility now. The energy required to separate the ions, well, that's not, your answer is not going to be anything to do with solubility. In the solution in, uh, of the magnesium hydroxide crystal lattice in the individual magnesium ions and hydroxide ions, as represented in the table below, is known as the lattice energy. So to separate the ions in solution is called the lattice energy. Um, as shown in the table, the lattice energy of strontium hydroxide is less than the lattice energy of magnesium hydroxide. So what they're telling you is that, hey, it takes more energy to separate this guy into ions, magnesium hydroxide, compared to this guy, strontium hydroxide. Okay? Explain why in terms of periodic properties in Coulomb's law. Okay, so periodic properties in Coulomb's law. Well, look on the periodic table. Which one's bigger? Strontium is bigger, so first of all, I would put on here strontium. Uh-huh. Is larger. Uh, you know, here I would say no, because in Coulomb's law, that's going to say, I think that's going to be where it's talking about the separation. Because they're not really asking why it's larger. They're asking about the energy of it. Does that make sense? You could go in, if you're confident of your explanation, you could add a little bit more. It's never bad to add more as long as you're right. But I don't think they're focused on that. So strontium is larger, so it has an atomic radius that's larger. than magnesium. So that's the periodic property, right? Strontium is larger. They get bigger as they go down. Yes? Um, you will, but that's just part of it. So they're doing two pieces here. So periodic properties for one, they're asking why is magnesium hydroxide more difficult to pull apart than the strontium. And I think that's where the Coulomb's law is. So the first thing that plays into that with Coulomb's law is the size, how far are they apart, right? So the magnesium is smaller or the strontium is larger. And as per Coulomb's law, what, what am I going to say here? As per Coulomb's law, Okay, so the distance between the charges is, uh, the greater the distance between the charges, the less the force of attraction, right? The greater the less the force of attraction. I would say you didn't you don't need ionization energy because that would be in the formation of magnesium hydroxide. You've already formed it. What you're saying is you're not really pulling them apart into individual atoms. You're just pulling them apart when they're diluted or when they, when they're dissolved in water. I don't think so. As long as you get the stuff they want you to and as long as your stuff is correct. I don't I don't know if you get the right answer and then you throw in a piece of information that's wrong, 
but it has nothing to do with the answer, I don't know what they'll do. I would think they would ignore that. I mean, because technically you got the right answer to, to what they were looking for. So as per Coulomb's law, the greater the distance between charges, the less the force of attraction. Since strontium is larger than the magnesium ion, be sure to reference both of them. Talk about both ions in your answer. Then it requires more energy to pull apart the magnesium hydroxide compared to the strontium hydroxide. Yes. It's in this case it's the distance between the charges that matter. Yeah, and let's let's just see what they say here. So one point is earned for the correct com okay, so sizes. So again, that's a part of Coulomb's law, right? And that's the period that's that's the, a, a big link between the periodicity, which is what they're talking about, periodic properties and Coulomb's law is the size, right? That's the big link between those. So you said which one's bigger and that's important. Yes. And then one point is earned for indicating the smaller inner ionic distances leads to greater lattice energy. Yeah? So because it's smaller, then it's going to be held together tighter, so it's going to take more energy. Yes? Or because it's bigger, they're not held as tightly together, so it's going to take less energy. Right? Okay, so let's see what they said. Uh, the strontium ion is larger than magnesium ion because it has additional occupied energy levels. Okay? But if you look at this, one point is earned for the correct comparison of cation sizes. They didn't have to explain that. They're looking just for the fact that you said strontium is bigger than magnesium. Yes? Okay. Um, Coulomb's law states that the force of attraction between cation and anion is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So the distance there. Since the distance is shorter in the magnesium hydroxide as compared to strontium hydroxide, the attractive forces are there. Okay. Yeah.